We shall be reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, chapter 15, and verse 25. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 15, chapter 15, and verse 25. 25. Now his oldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I never transgressed your commandment at any time, and yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fat calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into the houses. So he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and said to the first, How much do you owe my master? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to him another, And how much do you owe? So he said, A hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. So the master commended the unjust steward, because he had dealt shrewdly, for the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, and when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, for God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were unto John, since that time the kingdom of God has been preached, and everyone is pressing into it. And it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one title of the Lord to fail. Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery, and whoever marries her who is divorced from her husband commits adultery. This is a law, a spiritual law, my brethren, which cannot be transgressed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We must add something here now. The gospel of Jesus Christ preaches grace, but he who preached the gospel of Jesus Christ was none other but Jesus of Nazareth who lived and did the law. For the good Christian, for the man who really cares about the kingdom of heaven, the gospel of Jesus Christ is law for himself, grace for the others. That's the voice of the Holy Spirit. For me, not for you, for me, for me, it is law. Which means 
that I want to be, and because I do want to be in the complete freedom of the Holy Spirit, I made a decision to do the gospel of Jesus Christ, but with the grace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. For you though, I will say, seek for the grace of Christ so you can. And if we think like that, all of us in the Church of Christ, one by one separately, that for each one of us who have decided to go to the Kingdom of Heaven, the Gospel of Jesus Christ is our law, then in this Church there will be the grace of Christ and it shall reign. One law, therefore, which you cannot transgress in the Gospel of Jesus Christ is that no servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. A Christian cannot serve two masters, man in generally, but especially we're talking today about the people of God who have God's promises, who have the authority which is the word of God, and they have the grace which is Jesus Christ. For a Christian, my beloved brethren, there is a law. You cannot serve two masters. And this is for the Christians, because only Christians in his unrestricted freedom of the Holy Spirit has enslaved himself in Christ and to his brethren. From here we must start from the first question. Have you decided to be a servant? A very nice question. God has decided this. It says, Upon my men servants and maid servants I will pour out from my Holy Spirit and I shall prophesy. God is inviting us to free us from the oppression of the devil, to establish us free, to offer us His love, to flood our heart by the Holy Spirit with the love of God so. He who loves Jesus Christ to be he who submits himself to him and does his holy word. So he is a servant to the word of God. Completely free but a servant. An example. Someone comes and says, I drink a lot. I'm a slave to alcohol. I cannot stop drinking. At night I go home and beat my wife. And then I say, I won't drink again, but the next day I'll drink even more. Who will free this man? No man can. Only Christ can. What does Christ do now? He frees him. He says, you are free now. In one moment's time. And that desire leaves. Of smoking, of drug taking, of alcohol. The desires leave. A man is free completely. What happens? He becomes free. And the Bible says, only who Christ frees, this person is free indeed. And so this free man chooses, chooses who is his shepherd, who is his Lord, who follows. And because he has known from experience the love of Christ, who will he choose other than he who loves him with everlasting love? And so, all of us, I believe, we have chosen to have our Lord and our God, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, if this is the truth, my beloved brethren, that we have, all of us, chosen Jesus Christ as our Lord and our God, then we cannot serve two masters. You cannot live between two worlds. It cannot happen. It's impossible. Two things will happen in your life. Either you will hate the one and love the other. In the end, if you decide, in other words, to serve two masters, to be with one foot in the world and one foot in Christ, in the end, you will end up hating Jesus and loving the world. Or, or else, you will be loyal to the one and the one is Jesus and you will despise the other. These are the two situations in which a Christian is called and cannot reject them. He's called to live in. He cannot reject these situations. Are you drawn away from Christ? You will hate Him in the end and you will love the world. 
Are you drawn nearer to Christ? In the end, you will love Him. And you will despise the world. And you might make a mistake there. You might say, yes, but, I've heard this. Let's not be so fanatic about it. That's a great trap of the devil. We are not fanatics, we're just faithful. Faithful to the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have chosen the way of life. We have rejected the way of curse. Before us, two ways are open. One will lead us to, for us to draw near to Christ and to despise the world. Not to hate the world, to despise the world. The world has no worth for us. We have the kingdom of heaven. We have what's eternal, what cannot be swayed. I will look at things that are temporary. We have the glory of God inside of us. He who abides in us is greater than he who lives in the world. We have chosen Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen, brethren. We have chosen the kingdom of heaven. We have chosen the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have chosen to be loyal to Jesus Christ. That's finished. Because that's where joy is. Where blessings are. Where happiness is. Where the glory of God is. The family that's in love. The church in which Christ reigns in. That's where eternal life is. In Christ Jesus. You do not lack anything. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. That's where complete perfection is. In the vile and imperfect and wretched man. But this choice of ours with full conscience that we confess in the name of Jesus that it is in all our hearts. It could be lost. From what? From us not being careful of the desires of our hearts. An example, the older son in this parable. Believer, faithful, he never transgressed a commandment of his father. He always worked with all his heart. In this point, I believe that we all want to be like this man. He says this with boldness. I've never ever transgressed your commandment, Father. Whatever work you told me to do, I did it. Whatever you told me to do, I did. Whatever you wanted was law for me. I'm not like your younger son, who at one point in time heard the voice of the world, was deceived, left, he went to the faraway country, there he lived prodigally, there he lost everything. Because this is a story of man. God wants us close to him. And man leaves. And when he leaves, where does he go? To the harlots. Living prodigally. In sin. In transgression. And what are the consequences? Poverty, hunger. And then, I must live. I'll find a job in this world. And he went and kept swine. And there, he fed the swine pods in which he was not permitted to eat of you would not eat a thing not even pods but a time came and he came to his senses and said what am I doing here I should go back to my father's house I'm lost I'm dying here I'm eating pods how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare and not perish with hunger and they eat bread from heaven of the father and I'm sitting here. And he made up his mind and went back home. And his father, when he saw him, opened his arms and said, Come, my child is waiting for you. Put on him the best robe. Put on him a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Kill the fatted calf so we can eat and be merry and glorify God. Let's celebrate with spiritual celebration because my son was dead and is alive again, was lost and now is found. But, now, the manager of the father's estate, the oldest son, the only one, he managed everything, all that I have are yours, the father said to him. And what did the son say? I never transgressed your commandment, whatever you wanted, I did, a perfect Christian. I did whatever you told me to do, no matter where I was, whatever you said, I did it. But when, one day, he returned from the field to the house, he heard song and dance, joy, 
He asks, what's going on? Your brother has returned. And your father is happy. And he killed the fatter calf for him. And he didn't want to enter his father's joy. Why? Because his heart didn't have the will of God in it. He did not have the Spirit of Christ in him. I'm not entering. I've got it to do with these things. His heart was hardened. Let's see now, the best manager, the best Christian here. Just think of that. Who is the best Christian among us? Just say, it's me, I'm not. And all of a sudden, my heart gets hard. I get angry. Why? Because God wanted to bless him, in which I did not approve of. I did not approve for God to bless that man. I wanted God to bless me and those who I want to be blessed. I have my own opinion, my own thoughts, my own position. God's not saying things right. The brothers are not speaking well. They don't say things well. I say things well. And I, that I say things well, I'm outside. And the father comes, come my child inside. Come, come in your brother's joy. Come in the house. Don't sit there all by yourself. Come in the house now. Now this apostasy is more difficult. It's not like the apostasy of the younger son. It's the apostasy of the older son, which is very difficult because he is self-justified. What has he got? Pride. Arrogance. Arrogance, I know. The Word of God doesn't. God doesn't know. The voice of the Holy Spirit doesn't know. They don't know. I know. And self-justification, I was always faithful. And he never entered the house. He never entered. He lost everything. Nothing was left for him. Even though he had everything, in reality, he didn't have a thing. Even though he had everything. And everything was promised to him. Like Israel, like Jacob, I promise you everything. But what I see in your heart is arrogance, pride. As exactly we see today in the older son's heart, arrogance, pride. And he hasn't understood a thing. He's got his own opinion, me. I'm right, Father, you're wrong. And now, Jesus Christ comes to give a nice story to his disciples so they can understand the things that man must walk with the word of God and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and never with his heart never with his heart because he will fall into great destruction even if he has all of God's promises even if I have all of God's blessings until now if today I decide to walk according to the desire of my heart because I judge that right I will fall into problems, into difficulties. Come here. Let me explain to you, Christ says. There was a man who had a steward, a manager. He said, you will manage all my estate. And you know, my beloved brethren, a manager and a steward of the things of man then they had complete freedom to do whatever they wanted to do. Pharaoh had said to Joseph, All are under your authority. You are my second in command, apart from my kingdom. Potiphar had said to Joseph, All are under your authority, apart from my wife and me. He was a steward. Unrestricted authority. And the Bible says Potiphar did not know what Joseph did with his own possessions. And Pharaoh did not know what Joseph did throughout all of Egypt with his kingdom. He didn't know. He trusted him though. Potiphar had complete trust in Joseph. Pharaoh had complete trust in Joseph also. And my beloved brethren, I want to tell you something which is very, very serious. 
God has complete trust in you, brother. So you can govern your family. He has complete trust in you. He has complete trust in the elders of the church. He has complete trust in the mother who brings up her children. God has complete trust. You know why? He knows very, very well my weakness, your weakness and our weaknesses. But He has complete trust in me, for example, because He knows that the management of my house, I've given it to Him, to Jesus. He has complete trust in me. He has complete trust in the elders and the pastor if He knows that all the management of the church, they have given it to Jesus. God has complete trust in you, sister, so you can bring up your children if He knows that you have given all the governing and the management of your family as a housekeeper, you have given it to Jesus, but in truth, not with a cunning heart, rather correct that word, a mistake, not through self-justification like the older son. The older son wasn't cunning, he was self-justified. He was self-justified. The steward had all the management of this rich man's estate. He did whatever he wanted to do. But he was informed. This rich man was informed. And some people accused the steward. He did not find it out himself. And let's be careful here, my brethren, the work of the devil who accuses the brethren night and day, who goes before God and says, Who? Him. Her. They're all in sin. And that's his accusation, but we thank God, because we have Jesus Christ who says, I paid Father for their sins. Do not take it under account. And so God sets you free. That's the grace of God through Jesus Christ. And always... Christ wins over the accusation of the devil before God when you have devoted your life to Jesus Christ, the Word of God, and the voice of the Holy Spirit. That's why, my brethren, it's a great message from heaven today, I assure you. You are innocent, wise, winner, blessed, if your life is devoted to Jesus with complete obedience to His Word and to the voice of the Holy Spirit. You lose everything. If you are devoted to Jesus Christ, with your attention turned to the words of the leader and the elder or to the voice of the false prophet, and you bless and you flatter and you are flattered and you are blessed from other people. What we care about is not what other people say about us, but what Christ says about you. What does Christ say about you is what will bring you into blessings and to joy and to peace and to health and to glory and into the kingdom of heaven. That's what we care about. That's what we should care about. The steward was accused that he wasted the goods of his master. He manage things badly, not living prodigally, let's be careful of this, he was accused that he was a bad manager, he wasted his master's goods, he hasn't got wisdom, understanding, good management of things, and instead of his master's estate increasing, it was decreasing, being brought down. He received five talents and made them into four, and tomorrow three, and in the end, no talents at all. But it's not possible for God to give you talents and for you to waste them, for God to give you children and for you to send them to hell, for God to give you to serve a church and for you to offend other people, for you to waste from foolishness, mistakes. In the end, from pride, in your opinion and in your own thoughts. The stewardship will be taken away from you. 
You will not be an elder in the church anymore. You will not be a father in your household anymore. You will not be a mother in your family. You will be nothing. And from then on, you will take even worse steps. The steps of transgression, the steps of unjust deeds. In the end, the steps of judgment. Come, give me an account, the rich man said to the steward. And the steward was dumbfounded. He said, oh no, the steward will be taken away from me. I must do something. What shall I do? This is secret. I will repent. I will correct things. I will return. I will change because God is long-suffering. God is full of mercy. God is compassionate. God is pleased in blessing. God is happy when He blesses. He doesn't want the death of a sinner. He wants eternal life for the sinner if he repents. It is an invitation, my brethren, of repentance and holiness today. And holiness is our devotion to God. It's our attention to the Word of God, to the voice of the Holy Spirit. It's the fear of God which makes us wealthy and makes man wise. And the fear of God means I care a lot about the will of God. I take it under account. And not only do I care about the will of God and the Word of God, but at the same time, I don't care and I don't take under account any other kind of will. Nor from the honourable man, nor the elder, nor the prophet, nor the pastor. No one's will. I only want the will of God. No matter where it comes from. We're all human, sinners, vile and wretched. The only one who has power and authority is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who is expressed from His Word and the voice of the Holy Spirit. We love, we honour, we double honour all those who labour the work of God and those who preach the Word of God. We submit ourselves to the elders, to our overseers, but our King, our Lord and our God is Jesus Christ, the Holy One. Hallelujah. What will I do? He's uneasy. Now, that's the message. You must be uneasy, brother. What will I do? The stewardship will be taken away from me. And he sits there thinking about his future. And he knows, I know what I will do. I will create exits so they can accept me in their houses when the stewardship will be taken away from me. I must create situations. And what have I got in my hands? The stewardship that my master entrusted me with. I've got nothing else in my hands. My life is in my hands. I, I'm ashamed to beg and I can't dig. But I can do something else. What the master has given me and has not taken away from me yet, I will use it for his glory. What has he given me? His word, the Holy Spirit, our lives, our health. His church, our families, our brethren, our brethren who are humble, our brethren who are blessed, all of those, they're my beloved brother, a nice way in which God is open before you. Serve the church and you'll see what God will do for you. Not only He won't take away the stewardship from you, but much, much more He will give you because He needs you to serve with your prayers, with your comfort with your patience, with your labor, with all the abilities that you have from your Lord and has given you to manage. Serve your brethren. Serve the church. Serve the weak. Serve the poor. Serve the humble. Serve the rich. Serve the blessed. Serve Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Serve. And you will see that God is good. Is very, very good. He will continue blessing you exceedingly. But serve them humbly. 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 A person, my brethren, who learns to do all favors in Christ Jesus, because I want, I don't succeed in this. To do everyone's favours that are not sins or transgressions. You might ask me, have you succeeded in this? I say no, but the person who will and will find grace by God, this man will always obtain God's blessings in his life. It's a person who is humble, 
who hasn't got his own opinion. In his opinion, he has put it under the will of God. Do all your wife's favours, can you? In Christ Jesus. Do all your husband's favours, can you? In Christ Jesus. Can you do all your brethren favours, but in Christ Jesus, to your children, do all the favours, even to the people of the world, but always in Christ Jesus. Do not fear, they will not take advantage of you, because God will bless you. And if they treat you unjustly, God will bless you more. People will take from you one, God will give you a hundred. People will take from you a bit of joy, God will flood your heart with joy. It is a nice invitation for a new beginning, devotion, holiness, but with a humble spirit and a broken heart. Tremble before the word of God always, and you will see, my brethren, how our lives will change, our families will change, our church will change. Everything will change, because Christ will change them for us. It is He who creates new things. It is He who knows how to give and no one can take away. It is He who knows who to open, and no one can close. It is He who can exalt, and no one can humble. It is He who can glorify, and no one can reproach. My brethren, may Christ be with you. It's a great secret. If Christ is with you, who can be against you? Who? Who? Before the gates of hell open, one word Christ will say. Anyway, they're all bound. They can't do anything to you. But we want Christ to be with us. I want this a lot. I think you all want this too. We all want this. We want Christ to be with us. But for Christ to be with us, I must be with Him. I want Christ to be with my family. To protect my children, my grandchildren, to protect the soul. I want this. What can I say? Don't we want this? We all want this. I want Christ to be glorified. I want Christ to be with our church. I want Christ to be here as King. To do whatever He wants to do. Whatever He wants to do, we give Him complete freedom. Lord, do what you want to do. Because we know that you love us. And you will do the best things for us. Let him do what he wants to do. Let's let my beloved brethren Christ do whatever he wants to do. And let's plead with him to give us commandments. And for us to say, Here we are, Lord. Man cannot serve two masters. This cannot happen. He will either hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. Light cannot be with darkness. It cannot. Where there's light, there's no darkness, and God is light, and there's no darkness in Him. The idols do not mix with the truth. They don't. It cannot be done. The ways of the world cannot be with the ways of Christ. This cannot happen. It cannot be done. But let us all know with all assurance that if we make a decision to follow the ways of Christ, the mind of Christ, then God will give us all the authority. I give unto you all the authority, all the power to step upon serpents and scorpions and do all the power of the enemy and no one will be able to harm you. My beloved brethren, this is a nice wish. Pray for one another, the Bible says. May God be with you all. Amen.